Hi everyone, my name is Amandeep and today we're going to talk about how do you request e-signature in Adobe Acrobat Pro. And the situation we're talking is where say you have a, a PDF document or a Word document or any kind of document uh, really, but you need to send the document to a third party, a third person uh, to either get his or her approval or get um, him or her to sign the document um, and send it back to you, but you want to do it in legal form where not only it's like it, it shouldn't be like a stamp or a copy paste signature, there should be an, some sort of legal binding um, agreement um, with this process. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So let's jump right in and say I'm working with this form. Um, this is an insurance coverage, and maybe I need to send it to my client. Um, this is, by the way, this is a sample document that I've downloaded from Adobe Express just for the purpose of the uh, demo. But say this is some sort of form uh, that I need to get filled by my client and he or she needs to also sign the document and make it a legal binding that all the information that they're providing, they verify that it's correct and they're they're verifying their identity with it as well, right? So how do you how do you go about using Adobe Acrobat Pro DC, the latest version on the desktop to be able to send the document out for signature or approval? That's what, that's what we're going to talk about today, okay? So once you have the document open as a PDF, you will go into all tools by clicking on this button on the left-hand side. And then you will look for something called as request e-signature. If you don't see it uh, right away, chances are that your toolbox uh, is collapsed. You, you would just need to click on the view more to expand it. So there are chances that maybe the request e-signature is down there rather than on, rather than on the top, right? So that's a tool, that's the button that we're looking for. So you will click on request e-signature and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to get the signature done for you, but wh what's the email address of the person or what's the email address of the people, number of people that you wanna include in this signature process. So just know that it doesn't have to be only one person. Maybe there is a series of action that needs to be taken by one person and then the second person and then the third person. Think about a situation where, say, it needs to go to um, your boss for approval first and then it needs to go to maybe, say, a finance department to review the information and the numbers and they need to sign it and then it needs to go to your client to be able to fill the information um, uh, their records and everything, and then the client signs it, and then the document needs to come back, right? So there could be uh, multiple steps uh, or multiple parties involved in the signature and approval process, which is why you can um, enter more than one person as the email address. But to keep it simple for this demo, I'm gonna just type in the email address of one person only. And um, I'm going to, you can say anything as the agreement title. This will go in the email as a, as, as a subject of the email to this person. So you can say insurance coverage um, assessment form. You can, you can say anything. This is going to go into the body of the email. So the default says, please review and sign the document. I can say, please fill and sign this document. Now, um, I can also click on more options so that I can get into the authoring environment of the uh, document or e-signature so that I can decide what all fields needs to be filled by who and where the, does the signature go and things like that. So I'm gonna click on more options and you will see what it's going to do. It's going to upload the document onto Adobe's cloud storage and then it's going to give you this authoring environment to give you more people to be typed in if you want to. So this is your first signer and maybe you can type in the second signer and then the third and, and keep on going. Um, you can also say CC, who's going to be copied in the transaction. So say your boss needs to be copied anytime when a client completes this transaction, but you don't need to manually tell this to him. You can simply put your boss's email here so that every time the client signs in um, and signs the document and send it back, your boss gets the email notification automatically. So that's what the CC is for. Then again, the same title of the message, the body of the message, 
the file that was attached just by you. You can click on add files and add more files. Um, maybe there needs to be some follow -up, uh, more follow-up documents. Um, you can add those here. And then I'm gonna leave the button which says preview and add signature fields because I wanna decide where the signature goes, where different fields goes, because the document that I was working on, it was not a fillable document. It was a plain um, flat document. So I wanna click on next and get into the authoring environment of where it is going to let me decide um, where all those fields will go, as I said before. So let's just wait for the processing to be done. And now you still see that the document looks non-fillable, so I can't click and fill in the information. Um, now here I have um, two different ways of how I can bring these fields up. One is the automation where um, Adobe Sign and Acrobat being smart here saying, hey, I see some of the information here. It looks like you're trying to make them fillable fields. And it says I've detected at least 25 of them. So if you click on the button, it's going to do most of the job, if not all for you. So let's click and try and see how the form will turn into a, from a flat into a fillable document. So I'm gonna click here. And now you see all those fields being placed, all the check boxes, all the fillable text boxes, even the signature field is here uh, because it reads the context and the content of the document and help you decide um, and help you position all those fields for you. Now, in case if any of these fields are not um, set up properly, so say for example, uh, maybe this field wasn't there, I just deleted it purposely, but say, this field was not recognized. How would I bring the text box in myself? You have those app options on the left-hand side. So you can click on data fields, and then you have check uh, text box, drop down, check boxes, radio boxes, images, and whatnot. Um, so the one that I'm looking for is the text input. So I'm going to simply drag one of the text boxes here and say the text box will appear here for somebody to fill in, right? Now, that's all great. Um, now, once this is done, I can simply hit send because everything looks great to me. I can hit send here and I can say send one more time. And that's all you need to do to be able to send a document out for signature. But let's do one more thing here. Let's veer the hat off the signer or the recipient of the document and see how this is going to be signed or filled um, by the, uh, the, the third party, by the person who's going to be signing the document. So they will receive an email like this. Um, let me bring the screen down here. They will receive an email like this, which will say, hey, um, somebody has requested signature on this document. Do you want to review and sign? So you will click on review and sign button. And again, I'm acting as a recipient of the document or the signer of the document now, okay? So I've got the email. I've clicked on the button which says review and sign. The I don't need Acrobat, I don't need Adobe Sign license, I don't need anything, I just need an email and a browser to be able to fill that information. And that's exactly what, what I'm doing right now. So you see all the fields are fillable. Um, these boxes are check, check boxes, I can check into those. I can type in my name um, as the um, as the recipient of the document, I can type in email, I can type in phone number and whatnot, I can type in these checkboxes. Um, I can, e as, as a sender of the document, if the sender has made those fields mandatory, then I wouldn't be able to skip them, but um, I didn't make them mandatory, so now I'm just randomly choosing um, any of those fields to be filled as for my convenience and just for the demo, uh, just for the purpose of the demo here. Um, but of course, for as a, in the real scenario, as a sender, maybe you can make these fields um, mandatory or required so that the recipient is not able to submit or sign until they have filled all the information. So you can do that as well, okay? So um, let's say I filled the entire information, now I'm ready to sign. I'm going to uh, click and sign here and then I'm going to click on submit. And once I click on submit, the information will go back to the uh, sender or the owner of the form, right? Now, how do you receive this information back? You will receive one email. So that's one way of looking at it. 
and you will be able to see a document like uh, this in the email. So all the information will be filled in. I'm going to jump back to Adobe Acrobat. Go. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to open the downloaded document. Download it. So you see, this is how you're going to get the form returned back to you. All the information filled in, the signature done. You can even click on the signature to verify that this is actually a trusted, authentic uh, document. You can, you can see that this has been verified with the transaction number and you can even see the audit report and you can see when the document was signed, who signed it, what was the IP address of the person who signed it, the date, time, the whole history will appear on the audit report. And this is a legal document that you can um, take to any uh, court of law and claim that this is an authentic signature, right? Um, so that's how easy it is for you to send any document out for signature and uh, get the information back um, the right way. Um, if you like this video, please click on the like button. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about accessibility. So how do you build in accessibility in your PDF document, especially the ones that you want to send out to your clients or publish on a public forum like social media or on your website to make sure that you are ADA compliant and you're basically making sure that doc the document is readable by the screen readers um, by using some of the automations that I'm going to show you in the next video. Okay. So if you want to see more videos like this, please click on the subscribe button, share the video with others who might be able to get help from this. And um, um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.